Well, hello and welcome back to my rather chilly workshop. It's um, at the end of the Christmas period now, so I'm going to get back onto this guitar. My um, participation in the Jürgen Zoller Challenge and um, well it's coming on really nicely and uh, well I'll show you what I've been doing over the last few days in a minute but in this episode I want to tackle the neck so let's get going <laughs> I've got my neck strapped into uh, my neck holding jig and that's clamped to the bench using my bench dog so it's all nice and secure and um, well just before the holidays I sharpen this plane so it should be nice and sharp and I want to cut a 16 inch radius into this neck it's, it's only very shallow but I do like shallow radiuses I'm not one for uh, um, a real deep radius as it were so I'm going to try and do it with the plane All right so planing the neck to get the radius is quite a nice way of doing it but it's also fraught with difficulties and one of them being chip out and uh, well if I get chip out it's a real problem but I'm going to try and start off with a really low setting and um, well, we'll see how we go. Um, I find that helps quite a bit. Here we go. Oh, okay. Nothing's cutting at the moment. Still not cutting. Oh, we might be just nearly there. Oh, yeah, we're starting to get a very thin shaving there coming off the the binding which is a little bit higher than the fretboard at the moment so I'm just gonna work that down before I hit the fretboard right, I'm starting to take a little bit of the rosewood off this is Brazilian rosewood or Santos rosewood Just ease the blade out a little bit more. It is about having patience doing this. I'm also running the blade in at a slight angle because I find that helps as well. Okay, again, I'm starting to take off some of the, the rosewood now. The other issue I've got to deal with is the uh, dots. In fact, some of those are a little proud. Well, I'm definitely starting to get there, especially down the other end. So that's a good sign. looking straight and I'm really close okay so using a combination of this number seven plane I think it's number five plane I've managed to get this to the right radius or certainly roughly to the right radius and um, fairly level but now I need to use my sanding block and here I've got a 16th inch sanding block um, if you want to know how I make these things then uh, I'll put a link to the video in the description below uh, but uh, yeah now it's just a question of uh, a bit of sanding a lot of sanding 
So I won't bore you with this joyous activity. I shall get on with it and I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so now before I go back to the neck, the other day I popped into the workshop and I did the inlay on the top edge of the guitar. So I'll just show you a few clips of what I did to get that inlay in and then we'll go back to doing this neck. So after all that, the final result is that. And um, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. On the top and on the bottom, we've got that effect. So it's better than the straight line that I had originally. I think the top actually has probably worked a little bit better than the one at the bottom. But um, given that the, the top one is the one that you see when you're playing, I'm quite happy with that. So let's get back to the neck. I've radius this uh, fretboard to 16 inches and I've sanded it right down to 600 grit so I've got a nice shine on it. There are some little bits of tear out. Let me show you those. It's just around here, um, you can see them. I've actually tried to fill it in there with some dust and super glue. I'm not gonna bother with any of this. You can hardly feel it. And once it's oiled, I don't think you'll see it at all. So um, I think I'm happy with how this is looking. Now then, my normal approach for making the neck would be now to carve the back of the neck to give it the curve. But um, I always come a cropper there because I have this tendency to go too far along the neck and then when it comes to joining with the body, I've got a problem because I've gone too far down that end. So what I'm gonna do this time is get the uh, sides of the neck nice and smooth and get the width of the neck right. And then I'm gonna fit it to the body because the, the, the actual bottom of this isn't gonna change on the end there. It's gonna be about the same. The shape is gonna come further up the neck. So I'm gonna fit this neck and then I'm gonna carve it afterwards. Now I bolt the neck on, so it's not gonna be a permanent fix. It'll just be me getting it ready to make the uh, joint and then, um, well, I can take it off and uh, shape it. So, I need to plane this side down uh, and I don't wanna ruin my lovely fretboard, so I've got it in this uh, nice bright orange towel. So um, I think I'm gonna try it with a spoke shave to start off with. Let 
not quite sure what's the best way to do this. I think actually pushing it is probably the best way. Oh, get a bit of chip out there, so go this way. It helps to scrape it in the direction of the grain as well. I can just feel some bumps across there, so uh, I'm going to go in with the 60 grit. See if we can flatten those out. That's Feeling better, a little bit there. Now this side doesn't need as much taken off, so I'm going to do this with the scraper. Okay, so I've got the side smooth, now I need to cut the end off and I'm just going to cut it flush with that end piece there, the end of the binding. So, get that started. Now, stop a minute Dave, before you do that, just need to double check something. Now this is my little template that I use for neck joints. I'm going to have to undo this a bit. Slide it along. So basically I will be cutting this shape at the end. So yeah, I do need to go right to the end of this fretboard. So I'm okay. Let's carry on. It's just my rather strange way of fitting necks with the single bolt and sort of like a dovetail which fits into the body. You can probably see if I'm doing this straight better than I can. <laughs> Do you know what? I think I've just discovered a, an unintended consequence of this uh, this fixture that I've got here. Um, and that is I can hover the neck over the body where it's got to go. Except for one small thing, this corner gets in the way of the upper horn there. But hey, we can fix that, can't we? Okay, well I've got this rather convoluted affair here. Um, basically, uh, I made the adjustment on that piece of wood so I can slide all that jig or that fixture up close to the neck there. I've marked a centre line. I've also marked a centre line on the fretboard and I've put the ruler on that. And I'm using this uh, engineer square here just to plonk onto the centre line there to see that that is at the centre there. I've also marked where the 22nd fret is. So it all looks like it's in the right place. So what I need to do now is just to mark on the body where this neck joins without moving anything. Now obviously this isn't the end of the story because I'm going to have to make a template up to route that. But at least it should all be centred. One thing I did do when I marked the centre line here, I marked it on the centre of the rosewood and not on the binding because the binding is a bit thicker on the top there than it is on the bottom. And so it was the, the dark wood that I measured. Okay, so now I need to use my trusty template for the end of the neck. 
um, and this gives me like the dovetail that needs to fit into the body. Now then, I'm allowing 8mm above the body, so the fretboard and a little bit of the, uh, the neck there. The bridge, uh, which I've got over here, I've just done some tests on it. When it's sort of um, quite low, it's set to about 12 or 13 mil, but it will go up to about 16 mil. So I'm hoping that this should give it plenty of adjustment for the action. So I'm trying to do this around the camera, <laughs> which is rather silly. But anyway, for the benefit of the viewers, I'm just mark that with a pencil. There we go. I just need to do it on the other side now. And once again, this next clamp just keeps on giving, doesn't it? Look at this. Ideal for holding in the vise. <laughs> Except that this way round, the knobs stop it going into the, uh, the bench. Oh well. Oh well, well, you know, can't have them all, can we? Right, so we'll have to take that off there. Okay, now with both sides of the neck marked up, I'm ready to cut out that dovetail shape, but I think it's time for a cup of tea before I try and attempt that. So, I shall be back in a bit. Okay, now I've marked the uh, end of the neck there. It's just simply a case of uh, cutting it out. So. Uh, well, let's do this straight line first. Now for this cut, I'm going to use this block to uh, guide the saw in and um, hopefully keep me at 14 degrees. really close now so should be able to go in just finish this off Oh, that's lovely. Well, with that end cut, I think I've made a good start on this neck. Now I'm going to have to narrow this neck, take about a mil off each side because the binding is a bit too thick. And uh, I need to do that before I make myself a routing template. So um, I'm going to call this video a day and I will get on and do that so that uh, next time uh, I come back to you, I should have a routing template. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you all had a great uh, Christmas and uh, New Year. And um, well, thank you for joining me again. I'll see you soon. Stay safe. Cheers. <laughs>